Hello, my name is June Edwards, and this is uh, July 6, 2021, Senior Topics Discussion. And I'm going to go over the calendar events first. So looking at the second week of July, let's start with the 6th. The 6th of July is known as Build a Scarecrow Day. It's the date when the first picture postcard was made, but I don't know what year, probably in the 1800s. It's National Fried Chicken Day, and probably a lot of people had fried chicken on the 4th. It is National Kissing Day, and it uh, is when the Navy Revolutionary War hero, John Paul Jones was born in 1747. There's a lot that happens on July 6th. July 7th is Caribbean Day. It's Macaroni Day. It's the date in 1898 when President William McKinley annexed Hawaii as an American territory. July 8th is the date in 1835 when the Liberty Bell cracked while being rung at the funeral of Supreme Court Justice John Marshall. It was also the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia in 1776, and that was the 8th of July. The 9th of July is National Sugar Cookie Day. The 10th is the Teddy Bears Picnic Day, and that was a popular song many years ago. And it's when the first Allied invasion of Italy to liberate Europe took off in 1943. July 11, the famous children's author E.B. White was born in 1899. It's also Cheer Up the Lonely Day, and we can all do that. July 12, Battle of the Boyne. Paper Bag Day, the paper bag manufacturing machine was patented on that day. The British pottery designer Josiah Wedgwood started his famous blue and white Wedgwood pottery in 1730. And the American philosopher Henry Thoreau was born in 1817. And one more on the 13th. Barn Day, which is the second Sunday in July, Go West Day, and National French Fries Day. A lot of wonderful summer memories just from looking at all those days. But one of the things is P.T. Barnum's birthday, and he is the man who popularized the circus and before that, something called the American Museum and New York City. And what a colorful character. There was a movie that came out about him, oh, I'd say about four or five years ago. And it was really well done. It was a musical. Not good numbers in it. Barnum was 15 years old uh, when his father died. And that was in the early 1800s. So he had to go to work and support his mother and his five sisters and brothers. So he held a variety of jobs. He was a salesman. He sold rum, among other things, whatever he could do to make a living. But he eventually became publisher of a Danbury, Connecticut newspaper, the Herald of Freedom. He was arrested three times for libel, and he enjoyed getting the notoriety. And that started him off on his quest for fame and fortune. In 1829, at the age of 19, he married a 21-year-old Bethel woman, Charity Hallett, and they were married for 44 years. She uh, had four daughters. In 1834, just a few years after getting married, he moved his family to New York City 
and found his vocation as a showman. He successfully presented Joyce Heff, a very wizened Black woman whom he advertised as the 161-year-old nurse to George Washington. Of course, after she died, they exposed that story as a hoax. But uh, he was looking for a legitimate undertaking, and he was able to outmaneuver some wealthier bidders and take over the American Museum in New York City. It was a five-story marble structure, and he decided to fill it with every kind of oddity and unusual thing that you could think of. It was a carnival of human curiosities, dramatic theatricals, beauty contests, and other sensational attractions. He said, this is a trading world and men, women, and children who cannot live on gravity alone need something to satisfy their gayer, lighter moods and hours. And he who ministers to this want in this business has a business established by God. So he was playing upon the public's interest in the unusual and bizarre but he's always try also trying to lighten the mood for a lot of very hardworking Americans. He scoured the world for curiosities, living or dead, genuine or fake. He had outrageous stunts, repetitive, uh, repetitive advertising and exaggerated publicity. Well, in this American museum, uh, he ran it for about 25 years, and he had 82 million visitors, including Charles Dickens and Edward VII, who was then Prince of Wales. He found uh, uh, what he said was a mermaid, and it had a seemingly human head topping the finned body of a fish. And of course, that was found later to be fake. He called it the Fiji mermaid. And then he had Siamese twins who were for real. And they actually had lived. And that was a genuine curiosity. Then he had a man who was only 25 inches tall. And he nicknamed him Tom Thumb. And with Tom Thumb, they called him General Tom Thumb. Barnum sold 20 million tickets to his museum. Uh, President Abraham Lincoln wanted to meet Tom Thumb. Then they had a triumphal tour abroad and met Queen Victoria and gave a command performance before her and many other people. Later, he, when he was about 60, he bought into a circus with a man named uh, Abram Bailey, and it became the Barnum and Bailey, and later the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey. And he got an elephant from Thailand, a, a pure white elephant that weighed six and a half tons. And that was a sensation all over the country. And he started sideshows. And he had the three ring circus. He had trapeze artists. And he did many, many different inventions. And uh, he brought a lot of joy wherever he went. And that was P.T. Barnum. Unfortunately, the circus did last over 150 years, but it closed down in 2017. They just couldn't make it anymore. It was getting way, way too expensive. So then the next thing I want to tell you about is some um, scientific discoveries. And I have to get that up on my, um, see if I can get it here, up on my Google, on my computer. But just give me a minute and I will find it. No, it's not wanting to cooperate with me. 
uh, I need to get my printer ink replaced. Um, and it's very expensive, as you know. And when I do that, then I'll have better notes. Okay, scientific discoveries of 2020. Um, the oldest material found on Earth has been found to be more ancient than our own solar system. How is that possible? Was the Earth created first? That's what the Bible says, but now they're showing scientifically that the oldest material found on earth is more ancient than our solar system how curious is that they have found the first tyrannosaurus rex embryos that have been perfectly preserved from within uh, a digging that they found another thing they have found is that the planet mars hums and it hums in perfect rhythm whenever there is a mars quake we have earthquakes mars has mars quakes and when they have their mars quakes the whole planet hums isn't that strange they don't really know why yet now there is a star called betelgeuse and it's one of the brightest stars in our galaxy, you can see it with um, a popular telescope, doesn't have to be a professional one. And yet recently, all of a sudden that particular star dimmed and they thought, wow, maybe we're getting ready to have a Nova. Maybe the star is dying out and then we're gonna have a big bright explosion of light as it dies out. But now they have decided that what's happening is what they call a star burp. You ever heard of that before? A star burp. Well, uh, what's happened is they think that the, the star gave off a huge uh, gas cloud. And as it moved away from the heat of the star, it turned into gas in the cooler areas away from the star and that has obscured the star. They think that someday the star will be bright again. So they call that a star burp. There are also stunning details of an armored dinosaur's last meal. In their archeological diggings, they have found the remains of a perfectly preserved armored dinosaur, including the stomach and inside the stomach, the different plants and twigs and everything that that big dinosaur, which was a herbivore, ate. Also, we now know that the second largest Ebola outbreak, which has mostly been plaguing Africa is finally over. A vaccine has been released and used and it is stopping the disease in its tracks. And along with that, the other wonder of 2020 is the fact that we have three safe vaccines that when President Trump announced them in January of last year, that research was being done on them, that they would be ready by December People laughed and said that's impossible. And yet by December and January of 2021, people were beginning to get vaccinated. And now in Los Angeles County alone, 70% of the people have been vaccinated. And people over the age of 65, 85% of the people have been vaccinated and it is stopping the COVID-19 in its tracks. So it's amazing, these scientific uh, discoveries and things that have happened. And one more thing that I wanted to do for the month of July, you know, so many of us have not been able to travel because the airports are just such a big mess. And uh, a five hour flight to Florida right now is taking up to nine hours because uh, half the people have not returned 
to work at the airports. And so they've had to pull a lot of their administrative people into the security areas and baggage areas to keep what planes there are, keep them going. And so it's, uh, it's just such a big hassle to travel right now. But we're gonna do something called armchair traveling. And you can sit comfortably right where you are. And this traveling will not even cost you a penny. So the first region of the United States that we want to look at is New England. And I want to give you some quick facts. Where is New England? Well, it's a region in the northeast corner of the United States. And it's made up of six unique states, Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. And each one has their own history and their own culture. And they all are beautiful. And I'll show you some pictures in a few minutes. The climate, well, New England has four distinct seasons. Not so much like here. It is truly a year round destination. Summer is June, July, and August. And the average temperature is 80 to 85 degrees. Fall is September, October, November. Many, many people travel back there to see the colored leaves, the broadleaf trees and forests. And the average temperature is 45 to 50 degrees. The air is crisp and cool, and it's great traveling weather. Winter is uh, December, January, February, and March. It can get very cold. It's about 25 degrees and there's a lot of snow and a lot of snow activities, snowboarding, snowmobiles, skiing, sledding. The snowfall averages around 35 inches per year and the upper mountains can get over 100 inches a year. The language is English. Well, spring, I forgot about spring. That's April, May, and June. And the temperature is getting warm, but it's still quite rainy. And there's gorgeous, gorgeous, vibrant colored flowers. So there's all kinds of ports and harbors. There were many well-known people who lived in New England. Many were presidents, John F. Kennedy, born in Massachusetts. And he would vacation in the state of Rhode Island in Massachusetts. Former presidents George H. W. Bush and George Bush regularly vacationed in Kennebunkport, Maine. Former President Barack Obama studied law at Harvard University in Boston, bought a house at Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, and goes to Acadia National Park in Maine. And former President Trump was in New York, but that's considered more one of the mid-Atlantic states. Filmmakers love to make films there, and films in New England have included White Christmas, Carousel, On Golden Pond, The Crucible, The Perfect Storm, Mystic River, and The Departed. And there's lots and lots of history of the pilgrims in that area, and the American Revolutionary War and the colonial years. Many, many sites that you can go and see there. And the food, things like apple cider, pancakes with real maple syrup, clam bake on the beach, a Yankee pot roast on a cold winter night. There are clams for clam chowder, fresh organic fruit and produce for pumpkins, peaches, and apple pies, and a wide choice of cheeses and breads and microbreweries and distilleries and vineyards throughout the entire region. And of course, the wildlife is very diverse. It ranges from whales and dolphins to thousands of species of birds and wild moose. Moose uh, photography safaris are available in New Hampshire and Maine. You don't have to go to Africa for a safari. You can go to New Hampshire or Maine. 
This small coastal town in Rockland is the lobster capital of Maine. And they have a, a marine lobster festival there every August. So let me show you some pictures. You know, they've got lots of popular sports there. Football, basketball, volleyball, invented in Massachusetts. And Springfield, Massachusetts is the home to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Connecticut, New England, which is the southernmost state of the New England region, has a wine trail that goes through 25 unique vineyards. And there are a lot of things that you probably never knew about England. Let, let me start showing you some pictures here. It is only slightly bigger, all six states, than the state of Washington. And here is a picture of part of it. About 14.8 million people live there. Uh, not, not so crowded, very pleasant to visit. Boston subway was the first in the Western hemisphere. Here you can see it. Uh, they were having a rivalry with New York City, which was building its own subway around the same time. But Boston beat them to it and started operating their subway in 1897 and replaced the city's horse-drawn cars on rails. This is a beautiful picture. You know that Maine has more coastline than California, though that may seem hard to believe. Maine has 3,478 miles of coastline. When you include all of Maine's islands, it has more than 5,000 miles of coast. Our Golden State has 3,427 miles of coastland. Maine is nearly as big as the other five New England states combined. And here you can see a picture of one of the beautiful lakes in Maine. Connecticut is home to the oldest continually published newspaper. You know, the media is constantly under attack. But here is a legacy worth celebrating. Connecticut's paper, Let's see if I, the Hartford paper has been printed uh, since 1764. It began in a tavern in Hartford, Connecticut to inform everyone of the information going on, especially during the, the turbulent years of the American Revolutionary War. The Boston Common is the country's oldest public park. And it has so many historic claims to fame. The open space dates back to 1634 when Puritan colonists used it as a pasture to graze local livestock. And it was referred to as the common line land. They had a whipping post where they would whip people who were misbehaving. It was also used for marching and practicing for the beginnings of the American Revolutionary War. Dunkin' Donuts comes from New England and Dunkin' Donuts uh, has been really popular, and now we have Krispy Kremes that rivals it. Harvard, Harvard University served as a military barracks during the Revolutionary War. It was started by a group of theologians to give a religious education to the young men of the day. And of course, it has branched out into many different disciplines of education today. There are so many presidential birthplaces. This is the John F. Kennedy home in, Ma in Brookline, Massachusetts. Also, the Kennedy Museum is located 
in uh, Massachusetts, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous presidential library. New England has been the home to many authors. Famous people have been born in New England, but legendary authors such as Mark Twain, and a home in Hartford, Connecticut, Emily Dickinson from Massachusetts, and Robert Frost, who had a farm in New Hampshire. And there is a picture of Mark Twain. Connecticut is home to the country's oldest public library. Uh, you know, the region attracts so many intellectuals. So of course, it stands to reason it would have the oldest publicly funded library. There it is. <coughs> There's also a famous singing group. Remember the Ball Trap family? from the sound and music. They escaped from Austria when the Nazis had overrun it during World War II. And the family moved to New England, to Stowe, Vermont, which reminded them of the country they had left behind. And there are tourist places you can visit there and watch descendants of the Montreal family as they sing and entertain. A New Hampshire mountain holds world record wind speeds. Mount Washington is the highest peak in the northeastern United States, but it has brutal and erratic weather. It was once the location of the fastest wind speeds on Earth, not from a tornado or cyclone. In 1934, the winds atop the towering mountain reached 231 miles per hour. Wow. Another thing about New England, the women outnumber the men. There are more women than men in New England. According to 2018 data, women make up 51.3% of the population. Overall, women make up about 50.8% of the U.S. population. Rhode Island had multiple religious firsts. Let me show you this one. After founding Rhode Island, Roger Williams went on to create the country's first Baptist church a congregation that still exists today. The first Baptist church in America as it is, has been around for about 184 years. Rhode Island is also home to the first Jewish synagogue in America, which was dedicated in 1763 in Newport. Actually, the first Baptist church has been around longer I guess I was, we got bumped off there just for a few minutes. It's getting hotter and as it heats up, the internet is sometimes very erratic. I'm going to end the meeting now and wish you a pleasant rest of your week, the second week in July. Stay safe, everybody. Hope to meet many of you in person as we go into the fall. Bye-bye, everybody.